Over time, the original memory can be completely rewritten. And once we update a memory, we forget we ever changed it. The new version feels like the original. This is why two people who experience the same event can remember it completely differently. Each person's brain has reconstructed the experience based on their own biases and assumptions and emotions. We've seen how confabulation affects history, like the Mandela effect, how it affects society, like eyewitness testimony, how it affects your childhood memories. And that leads me to always wonder about the small confabulations that we tell ourselves every day. It's hard to know the answer to this, but how often do you rewrite past decisions? Like when you rationalize some suboptimal decision that you made by convincing yourself that you always wanted the outcome you got. This is a post hoc confabulation, a way for the brain to maintain a sense of consistency. How often do we misremember conversations? You ever had an argument where you and the other person are 100% certain about what was said, but your memories completely disagree? I know it's always tempting to say the other person is the one confabulating, but my hope is that after listening to this episode, you might be slightly more willing to revisit this. So if confabulation happens to all of us, how can we ever trust our memories? The answer isn't to distrust everything, but just to develop a tiny bit of skepticism about the stories our minds tell us. Your memory feels real, but feeling real doesn't make it true. Okay, so we've been exploring how memory is a shifting story, but what does this mean for how we understand ourselves? One thing that's happened lately in neuroscience is implanting false memories in animals, let's say rats. So here's how it works. A team led by Susumo Tonogawa at MIT puts a rat in a box and lets them run around to explore it. Then the rats come out of the box and they hang out and relax. And what the researchers now do outside the box is they reactivate the neurons that encoded the memory of that box. They do this using optogenetics. So they reactivate those neurons, and now they deliver a little electric shock to the rat's foot. Okay, now later they put the rat back in the box, a place where the rat had never before been harmed, and the rat freezes in fear, behaving as if it remembered being shocked there, even though that had never actually happened. So the scientists were able to create an entirely false experience, one that the rat presumably fully believed to be real. Brains don't store perfect representations of reality, but flexible, rewritable narratives. So will we one day implant therapeutic memories to help people overcome PTSD? And how would a technology like that blur the line between authentic experience and artificial recollection? And this, of course, reminds us of the film Total Recall with Arnold Schwarzenegger. If you haven't seen this movie, the protagonist, Douglas Quaid, visits a company called Recall that offers to implant vivid, customized memories of adventures that never happened. So Quaid opts for the memory of a secret agent mission on Mars only to discover that he might actually be a secret agent whose real memories were erased. This was a very pioneering story that played with the tension between authentic experience and synthetic memory. If you remember something vividly and emotionally and in detail, does it matter whether it actually happened? The film asks, what if your most cherished memories were never real? And neuroscience replies that, for better or worse, we're not that far away from creating synthetic memories. And in any case, you often create them yourself. And I just want to highlight, it's not just that individuals have unreliable memories. Societies do as well. They collectively misremember their past. Historical confabulation shapes our understanding of events, often to serve a specific narrative. In episode 41, I talked about the former USSR and how they loved to erase political enemies from photographs. For one example of many, there's a famous photo which proudly captures Lenin and other Soviet leaders in Red Square in Moscow in 1919. You can see Lenin, and on his left you see Leon Trotsky, and on Lenin's right is a man named Kamenev. 
and there's a Bolshevik leader from Georgia in front of them. Now, if you look at a release of this photo some years later, the official Soviet version of the photo, you see that after Leon Trotsky fell from party favor, he was airbrushed out of the photo. In the revised photograph, there's just an empty space where he used to be. And Kamenev, on Lenin's right, has disappeared as well. And the bearded Bolshevik leader never existed in the photo either. This is essentially the photographic version of confabulation. And this happens constantly in the retelling of history. As is often said, history is the pack of lies told by the winner. And as an apropos side note, it's not at all clear who first said that quotation. It's commonly associated with Napoleon or Churchill, but apparently there are versions of this going back to Herodotus. So nations and cultures are constantly shaping public memory. History is always being rewritten. And it works because just like individuals, societies need a coherent story. When reality is messy, history gets edited, sometimes consciously, sometimes through the natural distortion of collective memory.